As 2016 draws to a close, we are faced with the very real possibility that the new year will bring great uncertainty and a sense of despair and hopelessness about the future of our planet. How do I know this? Because you have personally expressed your feelings both publicly and privately with myself and with those who you confide with on our social media sites. We realize that these feelings exist in many of us. They are stronger in some than in others, but we can't quite grasp the real source of our anxiety. There is one possible reason why we feel so anxious about our future. We've discussed it before, but sometimes we place it in the back of our memory because it seems too painful to dwell on. When we think about disasters, we usually consider the events that take place in our natural surroundings, such as storms and earthquakes, which have occurred since the dawn of time. But what about a possible pending global disaster, one which defies what humanity is accustomed to? Many of you sense that this is where we are heading. But we remain on pins and needles because the world powers have been sworn to secrecy, while the mainstream media has primarily focused on civil unrest rather than environmental instability. Although you may not be aware of this, governments do in fact take precautions for pending global disasters. For instance, dwell on these known facts and then consider why this is happening. It's the U.S. Space Shuttle launched its last mission in mid-2011 at the same time that NASA had completely abandoned its government-funded manned spacecraft program. That same year, the Svalbard Global Sea Vault was sealed. They then announced that they would allow the world to restart agriculture immediately following a global catastrophe. The anticipated collapse of the global financial system, as governments would not be expected to pay back their debts, thus considered an economic reset for reasons not entirely known. Government organizations and the militaries ramped up efforts to build underground survival shelters and facilities across the globe. Are you aware that the demand for fortified shelters has skyrocketed just in the last three to five years? Why the rush? Do any of us know for sure? The construction of DUMB facilities has been going on for many years now and continues even today. The fact that the government is building these shelters mostly in remote, inhospitable areas, far from the maddening crowd, should have all of us asking serious questions. China has decided in just the past few years to quickly build subway complexes below most of their major cities, which is very odd in terms of timing. The government also constructed a survival bunker capable of holding 200,000 chosen people. Russia announced the construction of 5,000 new nuclear bomb shelters that were required to be completed by the end of this year, 2016. Their subway system also had to be relocated deeper than needed for use as emergency shelters. And what about FEMA? Many of you already know of these reports and have commented that they are building camps and acquiring body bags, as well as stockpiling tons of dried food. In 2013, they publicly announced that citizens should acquire a long-term survival kit in case of a global emergency, at the same time that the DHS was buying countless rounds of ammo. Why? Should we be asking serious questions? Yes, I really think the time has come to get a better grasp on what is going on. We deserve to know, not only for ourselves, but for all those we love and care about. So why all of these preparations? And what exactly is the rush in completing these objectives? We know that solar activity will increase as the solar cycle moves into a maximum time frame in the coming years. There is talk that NASA is watching the sky for some sort of shockwave of energy to reveal itself in the very near future an event so powerful that it could very well affect one-third of humanity. You may ask yourself, is it possible for an event of such magnitude to take place? 
Consider that in this century, NASA actually recorded the largest pulsar wave to come in contact with our atmosphere in human recorded history. Scientists detected a flash of light from across the galaxy so powerful that it bounced off the moon and lit up the Earth's upper atmosphere. The flash was brighter than anything ever detected from beyond our solar system, and it lasted over a tenth of a second. NASA and European satellites and many radio telescopes detected the flash and its aftermath on December 27, 2004. The scientists said the light came from a giant flare on the surface of an exotic neutron star called a magnetar. The apparent magnitude was brighter than a full moon and all historical star explosions. The light was brightest in the gamma ray energy range, far more energetic than visible light or x-rays, and invisible to our eyes. NASA has a habit of predicting that the sun may generate unprecedented solar storms for a lengthy period. They cannot accurately predict Earth's normal weather a week in advance, and still somehow they claim to be able to do this with respect to unprecedented weather on the sun and do it years in advance. So what they are saying is that they are more dependent on vulnerable computer technology now. But we had similar dependencies in 2001 and in 1990 when previous 11 year solar cycles hit. So what is different about the current cycle? Their solar prediction would almost suggest that they possess some sort of extra information that has not been currently stated. So this may be more accurate than any of us would have imagined. In October of this year, the president by executive order implemented a coordinated effort to begin within the next 120 days from the date of his order to prepare the nation for catastrophic space weather. The order was prepared and provided to the media on short notice. The proclamation by the president can be read in its entirety at the address listed here. One thing seems certain. Whatever is approaching the earth, people are taking notice and sharing what they have witnessed and observed with the technology that is afforded them. I will make every effort to keep you updated on visual observations that are provided both on our Facebook account and through our channel correspondence. I must note, however, that the authenticity of these image captures cannot be verified with 100% accuracy, but I will make every effort to carefully examine each photo and video that is presented. So let's examine each of these recent captures for your review. We begin with a video and image compilation taken by a photographer in the mountains of North Carolina at the end of November and the beginning of December 2016. Each capture was completed using a disk filter attached to a camera lens. You will notice the V-shaped tail formation appearing to the left of the sun. You may recall that Nibiru was often referred to as the comet planet by the South American astronomer Carlos Munoz Ferrara. It was done so because of its distinct tail consisting of cosmic red iron oxide dust and debris. He pegged the name Herculubus to describe this large celestial entity. If this is an actual capture of Nibiru, which the photographer has indicated that it is, then the planet, which is the outermost planet of the Nemesis system, would have to be entering into the inner solar system where comet tails become more defined. This is by far one of the most revealing captures to date. In these images from December 2nd, there are two orbs captured below the sun. Notice how both objects are appearing behind the tree line, which is absolute proof of the existence of celestial entities, as flares or reflections will always appear in front of objects in the landscape. I wanted to include this extraordinary capture taken in August from Brazil because the winged formation or the winged serpent anomaly has been photographed on at least three or four separate occasions since the beginning of 2016. Notice how the entire formation appears from behind the mountains 
and is reflected in the water. This capture is once again indicative of the formation of the winged globe, as revealed by the Maestria Observatory in Brazil on December 6th. In the image sequence, there is an enormous entity that comes into view separate from the sun. The enlarged photo of this object shows the tremendous wingspan of this comet-like entity. What's so interesting about this is that the formation is appearing on two separate observatory cameras, both of them from Brazil, as shown here, just below the sun, from the Dog's Heaven Observatory. So needless to say, we have two separate sky cameras that are showing the same thing. More than just a coincidence in these captures. Here is a naked eye observation from Canberra, Australia, which I just received yesterday. The observer indicated that the object was visible before capturing it with his camera, appearing just above and to the right of the sun. If you look closely at the object, it appears to be a partially eclipsed, possibly due to haze in the atmosphere. But nevertheless, an object which the observer indicates was visible prior to capturing the image with his camera. This is also a naked eye observation from Seville, Spain on December 7th. The observer indicates that after noticing something very bright in the sky, he then grabbed his camera and photographed it. After examining this image, I was able to rule out the possibility of this being a sun dog, as the characteristics of this type of anomaly are not consistent to label it as such. And it cannot be a flare or a reflection, because the observer indicated that he saw it prior to capturing the image with his camera. This video capture is most revealing in that there are two very distinct and separate light sources emanating from the observatory's sky camera. This is what is commonly referred to as a two-sun phenomenon, which I must add has just recently been viewable from the all sky cam observatories. Also notice that the sun to the right is smaller and not as bright, which would fall in line with the hypothesis about a brown dwarf binary star in our solar system. Here is another observatory in California showing the same two sun phenomena just recently. As I mentioned, this is now appearing on multiple sky cameras. The following compilation of images were captured through the coordinated efforts of a group of amateur astronomers from Canada and the United States on uh, November 14th and featured in a video publication on the YouTube channel of That Is Impossible. These appear to be showing an inbound planetoid or brown dwarf, larger than the known planets of Jupiter and Saturn and certainly much larger than either Uranus or Neptune. So there you have it, folks. I apologize if I am unable to include your specific images or videos in our productions due to time constraints. If you visit our Facebook page, you will notice that we do include many of your captures on our front page. So be sure to visit there whenever you have a moment, leave a comment or a message with your photo captures, and we'll check them out whenever time permits. So hopefully you now have a better understanding of why the government has been so secretive for so many years about this incoming system. They knew what was coming all along, and now they realize that the cat is out of the bag. The secret can no longer be kept in the dark. They built their four to five facilities to protect them from coronal mass ejections from the sun, from asteroid impacts, and from catastrophic flooding, all associated with the passage of this system. This is the very reason why the CIA relocated their division to Colorado, and also why the NSA relocated their headquarters to Utah. Hundreds of billions has been invested to protect the elite. So now it's time to do what you can do to protect yourself. Keep looking to the skies, as this is your path to salvation.
second week of December. As 2016 draws to a close, we are faced with the very real possibility that the new year will bring great uncertainty and a sense of despair and hopelessness about the future of our planet. How do I know this? Because you have personally expressed your feelings both publicly and privately with myself and with those who you confide with on our social media sites. We realize that these feelings exist in many of us. They are stronger in some than in others, but we can't quite grasp the real source of our anxiety. There is one possible reason why we feel so anxious about our future. We've discussed it before, but sometimes we place it in the back of our memory because it seems too painful to dwell on. When we think about disasters, we usually consider the events that take place in our natural surroundings, such as storms and earthquakes, which have occurred since the dawn of time. But what about a possible pending global disaster, one which defies what humanity is accustomed to? Many of you sense that this is where we are heading. But we remain on pins and needles because the world powers have been sworn to secrecy, while the mainstream media has primarily focused on civil unrest rather than environmental instability. Although you may not be aware of this, governments do in fact take precautions for pending global disasters. For instance, dwell on these known facts and then consider why this is happening. It's the U.S. Space Shuttle launched its last mission in mid-2011, at the same time that NASA had completely abandoned its government-funded manned spacecraft program. That same year, the Svalbard Global Sea Vault was sealed. They then announced that they would allow the world to restart agriculture immediately following a global catastrophe. The anticipated collapse of the global